Hello, Robbie boy. Hey, Deuce. Where do you think we are today? I don't know, but it smells like rubber. Wow. <laughs> and it's chilly today, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Smoggy. Oh, yeah. And all of that. I have frost on my bald head. Well, guys, we're in Orem today. And we're going to step inside where it's a lot warmer and find out what we're doing here. So here we go. All right, guys, we're indoors now, and it's a lot warmer in here, isn't it? So happy. I know. Me too. So we're going to introduce you to our first guest, the guy that got it all going, Jesse McGee. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Appreciate Glad to have here. you. Thank you. So what our viewers are going, to want, are going to want to know is how you got first started with rubber stamps. <laughs> 1966. Oh, that's a good year, when I graduated really? from high school. I was working at the post office making $1.25 an hour, so I needed a part-time job. What? So I found a guy that wanted to sell his little rubber stamp business. I bought it for $1,000, took it home, and told my wife I was going to make rubber stamps. And she says, you're going to what? What? And I said, I'm going to make rubber stamps. I'm going to build it up to where I can quit the post office and do it full time. And so I know that's where it started. I noticed the marquee out there says 50 years. 52 years. Wow. Started in 1966. That's amazing. Well, what we want to do now is we want to walk right over here and show our viewers a little bit about the first <laughs> equipment. Yep. Of how it all started. Okay. Let's walk over here. Oh, oh. Yeah, this is it. In 1966, this is the equipment I bought. A little vulcanizer, a little panograph engraving machine. Took it home. In those days, I had to set the type one letter at a time, heat it up, force it into a matrix board, and then put that in back in the vulcanizer with a piece of raw gum rubber and um, vulcanize it and make the rubber die. Fascinating. And then cut them apart, put, a mount, put them on a mount and a handle, and I had a rubber stamp. Now, I remember when I first came to you for trophies. Yeah. Yeah, you were doing that hand right. engraver. Yeah, that was that one. That one right the there. Graph, one letter at a time. We would, en we would en I, I mainly bought it to engrave name badges and plastic signs. Mm. And then people asked me if I could engrave trophies. So then I started to engrave trophies. And since 1966, just it evolved. As my kids came into the business, they're the smart ones. <laughs> and it's, it's grown now to three locations, three businesses, and all of my kids work here. Orem, AF, have a Midvale. Midvale, two of my sons manage Midvale. And it's the biggest store. It does more than Orem and uh, American Fork combined. Hmm. Our, my son Kurt and my son Clint, Clint manage Midvale. My son Kyle manages American Fork. Corey, Rochelle, Craig, Clint, and, and, Janae. Not, and Janae work here. Uh -huh. Not so many kids, I forget their names. And the boys are K's. Bo all the boys are K's. And the girls are? Well, I wanted to name them with an individual name, so it's Rochelle and Janae. Janae, okay. All right, I'm just thinking about why is it Central Stamp Company? Well, when I started in Provo, I named it Central, Central Utah Rubber Stamp Company. That's right, wow, that's right. And uh, people kept complaining. They said, we know you, but we can't ever find you in the yellow pages because we can't remember Central Utah Rubber Stamp Company. Oh, okay, too long of a title. Yeah, so in 1980, when I bought this building, I thought, heck, I'm just gonna change it to McGee's. Sounds good. Everybody remembers that. We're going to take our first break right here and go get something warm, like some vest vegetable beef soup on a day like this. We'll be back in a minute. That's it, that baby yard. Going yard. Yes.
Okay, Jess, so this wall right here is where you first started with the traditional stamps, right? right. Uh -huh. Yeah, when I first started, all we made was the traditional rubber stamp. Uh, we'd uh, set the type up by hand, make a rubber die, mount it on a mount, drill a hole, put a handle on it. And we did this for several years, maybe 10 years before. And then it evolved to? We started making self-inking stamps. The only difference was the traditional stamp, you had to buy an ink pad, hit it on the ink pad, and then make an impression. Then they finally came out where they built the ink pad in the frame so it would ink itself every time it every time you, you used it. it down. Okay. That's why it was called a self inker. All right. Then it went to a pre inked stamp where the rubber die oh. is made with a very uh, porous foam rubber that holds its own ink supply oh. and just allows the ink to come through on the letters. Nothing rotates over like a self inker. You just press it down, it makes the impression, and it'll make several thousand of impressions before you have to add ink. All of these you can re ink the self inker, the pre inked. Of course, this you just use a rubber stamp pad. So after the traditional stamps, did you go to badges next? Well, with that little pantograph that I showed you, yeah. I started making name badges. Badges? We ain't got no badges. Just we could engrave straight lines like this, uh, one letter at a time on that pantograph. Now, with the lasers, with the lasers, yeah, right. Now we can do full color. Uh, and any design, because our lasers will cut the design, and so it's just unlimited on what we can do with name badges now. All and, right. And then I started making, people asked me if I could engrave trophies. And so I think what our viewers would like to know is a timeline between the traditional stamp and then the self-inker. Well, I started in 1966, and probably 10, 12 years, we just made these. In the 1980s, we started making self-inkers, and then probably in the 1990s, we started making pre-inks. And we still make all three. The self-inking is probably the most, most popular. popular. We can make them quicker, they're, uh, and they're a little cheaper than the pre-inked. Okay, and we're all about cost, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is a beautiful wall. This is the acrylic wall, right? This is where we started to get into acrylic. And at that time, all that was available was clear acrylic. By, not, by this time, though, we had laser engravers instead of that pantograph. Okay. We now had laser engravers. That we can set up anything on the computer, send it over to the laser. It cuts it into the acrylic, and you have a nice-looking award. So the, mainly the acrylics are awards? Uh-huh, mainly. Mainly, okay. We make some name badges, na uh, signs out of acrylic. How popular are they? Very popular, but now color is the thing. I can show you that over there, colored oh, acrylic. Oh, I see that, yep. Yeah. All right. The acrylic comes in every shape, and there's a lot of color. Yeah. All right, so we need, we, I think we're going to go and uh, meet our next guest. Okay. Your son. My top engraver. Top engraver. Craig. Boy, Great. it's nice to be the top in something, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, can't beat that. All right, here we go. Well, look at this. There's the man. There's the man. There's the man. <laughs> how are you, sir? Good, how are you? Truly blessed. Well, we're back here in the other room, and we're going to introduce our next guest. This is Jesse's son, Craig McGee. Right? Right. <laughs> and? 
It's loud back here. Yes. And why is it loud? I have the exhaust turned on because these are the laser engravers. And when you start engraving, it puts off a lot of smoke. So it's pulling all the smoke out. Is the smoke detrimental to your health? No, not really. Most of the things that I engrave are wood or acrylic, and it pulls it out really good so the smoke doesn't get in here. There are a few things I need to be careful about engraving. Oh. It puts off a toxic smoke. Okay. And I'm sure these uh, in, uh, lasers are expensive? Yes, they can be. And people are always concerned about the cost. What does a typical laser run? Depending on the wattage of power, they run about 50,000 and, and up. And up? Yeah. Wow, Rob. That's about what you paid for your Toyota, <laughs> wasn't it? I'll be paying for the next seven years, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, so how long have you been working here? I've been here, well, of course, you know, we grew up here as kids. You know, Dad was always bringing us over here when we were five, six years old to vacuum the floors. And then I went off to college, then came back about 1995. So I've been here, what, 23 years? Wow. And can you imagine you've been feeding your family off this product here? Yep. yep. Rubber stamping. Has it been good to the McGee's? Absolutely, very good. And what I like about it is, when you first started, wasn't the whole family in one building? Yes. You know, Jesse started a few locations in Provo. Right. And then bought this building in 1980. And, you know, the older brothers were here first. And then as we all got older, we all came here. Orem was basically the first location. Then it went to Midvale, and now we also have American Fork. Yeah. Not Spanish Fork, though. I'm trying. Okay. All right. I'd love to have Spanish Fork. I know. Who wouldn't? That's right. Who wouldn't? Now, have you got anything that we can show our viewers that you're uh, lasering right now? Yes, I got these two set up. Uh, let me push start and you can see how they work. That's what we want. Uh, let me turn around to the computer. I set everything up on the computer, send it to the laser like they're a, a big printer. Like Robbie's always saying, we're all about the demos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is you exciting. won't believe this. You won't believe how quick this is, guys and gals. And I rem remember when your dad had to do one letter at a time. Yep. Now I've got three wood plaques in there going all at the same time. It'll take about 20 minutes and I'll have all these done. And it used to take your dad to do one trophy how long? It would take him about well, a couple hours to do one trophy. One trophy. In the beginning. These lasers have really changed everything. Yep. Okay, Craig, while that's lasering let's show our viewers and go in this other room and okay. show them another machine or another the, the next step in here is finishing once they come out of the laser then they go back here the guys will clean them up get them ready to go out to the customer all right let's don't talk about it let's do it okay All right, here we are, guys, in the cool, quieter room nice quieter. where they finish the product. Mm -hmm. Right, Craig? That's right. And who's your employee? This is my friend, Brian. Your friend? Hey, Brian. Yeah. How's it going? Oh, how long have you worked here? Since May. May? Yeah. Have you learned a lot? I guess so. <laughs> and, and what's your main duties back here? Uh, well, I work in the finishing, so what I do is set up trophies. I do sublimation, so putting ink on metal, uh, and then I just put plaques together. So sublimation, like another $50 word, means what? <laughs> it's basically putting ink, uh, it, with using a heat press, putting ink on metal and plastic. Oh, oh that is warm. Yeah. Uh, that's warm. It's very warm. <laughs> <laughs> What's the temp on this, Craig? 350. 350? Yeah. All right. 
And how do you like your job? It's nice. It's quiet and to myself. Ooh. <laughs> Go at my own pace. You, I like that. And I imagine the McGee's are really good bosses. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, you can't beat him as a boss, can you? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Brings me jerky. That's what I Brings him jerky. Yep, I would believe he'd be a good one. <laughs> All right, we appreciate you being in our show. No problem. Craig, uh, continue where Brian left off. Okay, once things come out of the laser room, once they're engraved, come back here. He'll clean them up, you know, like plaques. He'll mount them to the board, acrylics, glue to the base, just all the finished work is done here. Get it cleaned up, get it bagged up, get it ready for the customer. Go get something even warmer now, something warmer than the soup. How about some pizza? Mm. Ooh, does that sound yes. good? Get yes. you some pizza, and then we're <laughs> gonna go in and meet his brother, right? Yep. Ooh, do you think he's in a good mood today? I don't know, it's hard to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are they solid gold? They used to be. I wish they were, but no, these are all plastic. They're all plastic. Look at that, Trav. They're all plastic. All right, we're in the other room here with another one of the McGee boys, another K. This is Corey. How are you? We're good today, buddy. Hey, I can't think of a better thing to engrave. There's your name badge, oh. custom made just for you. Oh, I love it, man. You know what I like about the McGee's? Remember when you had the softball team? Oh, yeah. And all the kids were on the one team? Yeah. Oh, that was a good bunch. Oh, we had a good, great bunch of Great bunch of softball players. That's just for you, that's custom made. That's how we do name badges. That's a uh, custom engraving machine. I set the type font that I want, the letter size, the cutter size, and it automatically does it. I noticed it was loud and you don't not got any ear wear in. What'd you say? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what'd you say? Yeah, it's been, I've been sitting next to this for a lot of years, so I usually do wear some ear, ear wear? Yeah, I got some ear protection here somewhere, but I'm too busy to mess with ears. <laughs> <laughs> so you put goose in in the computer, right? Yeah, I typed in the computer Show the size, size of the letter. This has got about a .325 letter, and it's in Helvetica font. And once I get it all programmed, I just send that over to the machine, put the, the plastic material back in there. Yeah and it's ready to go. It's an automated, automatic engraver. So we do a lot of corporate signage, a lot of name badges, um, a lot of trophy plate engraving. This is just one of the things I do for the engraving department. Ooh, that beats what your dad did back in 66. He did, a, he did it the old fashioned way that I'll show you later. <laughs> So this is how the engraver used to be done. And before computers came out, we did everything on what's called a panograph machine. When I want to scratch engrave or do a custom engraving, I lock the piece in here. This is a cigarette lighter that we've done. You put the letter slugs in here. This is a diamond tip. And as I trace that letter, and hold that diamond down, it reproduces that engraving. So years ago, like I showed you on that badge we just did, uh -huh. that would all have to be set up in here and done. But with the computer technology that they, there is available, we can do a lot more engraving at a lot faster pace. But I still use this a lot because we do, we do custom engraving on jewelry, guns, knives, watches, and so some of the product that I want to engrave, I feel more comfortable locking it in and doing it this old-fashioned way. So I still use this every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is an axe that I need to engrave her name on the end, so I lock that in there. 
uh, custom engraver. This is a gal getting a hatchet. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey. No comment. We don't better not make her mad, right? That's right. That's right. So Rob, you could get a locket for Val. Oh yeah, I could. You could. If you paid me. <laughs> <laughs> During Christmas, but all through the year, we're we're busy. All, I'm busy all day long doing this custom engraving. So, you haven't got time to play uh, solitaire. No, no computer solitaire, no video games. I'm nothing but work, dude. No Fortnite. <laughs> no Fortnite. The kids are playing Fortnite. <laughs> wow. This is the Big Cheese Award. So That's geez. a war you ought to get, the big <laughs> cheese. Okay, guys, we're in the other north end of the building at McGee's Rubber Stamp, and we're going to get the female perspective, and we love that, don't we, We love Rob? to do that. <laughs> We've been talking to all these males. Yeah. So yes. we're going to talk to Rochelle McGee, and what's the married name? Farron. Farron, okay. And before you get into the business aspect, I want you to brag a little bit about your brother. This right here. I could brag about Craig all day long. He is really the backbone of Orem McGee Stampin' Trophy. Pretty much everything that happens here at McGee's runs through Craig. And he's in a chair. He is. He was diagnosed with MS about 13 years ago. He's got progressive MS, which means he's not going to get better. And he's in a chair, but he can go anywhere in this shop that any of the rest of us can go and do probably more than we do. And he could call in sick, couldn't he? He could, but you know what? I don't think I could count on one hand how many times he's called in sick in 13 years. All right, a little bit about the business. Mm -hmm end of the store? Yeah, don't let the boys fool you. It's all the girls that run this place. I can believe it. Yeah, yep. it starts right up here with the girls that take orders on the phone, at the counter. We have a website. I actually handle most of the online ordering through our website. And then they take the order and distribute it throughout the store wherever it needs to go. Once it finishes production, it comes right back up to us and we finish it from there. We price it, we call the customer and help them when they pick it up. So how long you been at McGee's? Oh, that'll tell my age. That's okay. <laughs> I've been here about 30 years. 30? Mm -hmm. And Corey said 40 for him. Well, that's, that's stretching it a little <laughs> bit. I mean, he's only six years older than me, so do the math, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 51, I'll tell okay. you my age, so okay. I started right out of high school. Okay, does so. that sound like Corey though? Yeah, that's no. Corey. <laughs> okay. That's him. I have a, I do have a question. Oh, it's about time. <laughs> what is the strangest thing that you guys have had to engrave, the strangest request? Oh wow, we get a lot of really strange things, but the one that comes to mind is we had a customer come in with a toilet plunger and wanted to give the Golden Toilet Plunger Award. And we sprayed it gold and engraved it and they gave it as their Golden Plunger Award. But we've done some pretty crazy things. If whoever, if they ask for it, we make it happen. Now, did that go to a man or a woman? It went to a woman, actually. Oh, A radio see? station, yeah. She Equal spends a lot rights, of time man. in the bathroom, I guess. Equal <laughs> rights. Yep. All right. Appreciate you being okay. in our show. Thanks for coming in. Uh -huh. Now, this big thing was the BYU-Utah rivalry. Right. Whenever there was a BYU-Utah game, whoever won that game, either BYU or Utah, that team got to take this big trophy home. So that means Utah took it most of the time? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to get that in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, Travis, it's time for us to end this show. We'd like to thank the McGee's. For Thanks joining for us on this show, and uh, where's Goose? Where'd uh, you go? I don't know. It happens every show, <laughs> every show. He comes up missing, huh? Travis, anything? Yeah. Wait, take a look over there. No. No, behind there, Travis. Wow.
You found me. I didn't think you would today, but you did. Well, as usual, Trav, you're going to pan outside. It's murky, smoggy, cold, cold, cloudy. But cold. nonetheless, it's still a great day, right? It That's is. Right. right. It really is. Heck yeah. And as usual, what? We, we love, love you. you. We, we truly do. do. And this is our 93rd show. Whoa. Wow. Maybe they'll make a trophy for our 100th show. Ooh. We need to do that. Ooh. I like that. Good yeah. idea, Rob. Give me your logo and we'll make you a logo. Okay. Sounds good. Well, it's been great to be here at McGee's in Orem. Sure has. And until our 94th show, we're out of here.